What's up everybody, I'm Stephen O'Brien and on behalf of BetBright I was doing the Road to the Super Bowl series and yes, that includes the Pro Bowl. It's a bit of a break and my Good, the Bad, the Ugly piece is going to be all about the Super Bowl preview uh, and I'll hit you with a video as well next week to preview the Super Bowl. But let's do it. Let's talk about the Pro Bowl. Right, the Pro Bowl. What the hell is the Pro Bowl? The Pro Bowl is an AFC versus NFC game. It's the All-Stars that were voted from the AFC and the NFC and they come together and play. So it's the week before the Super Bowl this happens. We see in other All-Star games and other sports, they hold it mid-season, some of them hold it you know, after the season or whatever. This is held the week before the Super Bowl. That is relatively new for the NFL over the last whatever number of years, five, six years. They used to have it after the Super Bowl, but no one would tune in. And with the NFL, it could be all about the money and they want people to tune into these games so as i'll discuss they've kind of done some stuff around it to try spice it up a little bit so it's held the week before the super bowl and the super bowl players who were voted into the pro bowl they get alternates get put in in place of them so they're voted in before they even know that they've reached the super bowl and that's what you'll see happening so for instance in the afc tom brady has been voted to the pro bowl as the quarterback will he play no he won't especially with that hand someone else will come in and replace him so uh, a couple of years ago they tried this thing where they had like captains and they get you know Jerry Rice to pick his team kind of like you would in the schoolyard but they decided to bring it back to this format of AFC versus NFC. Now this only exists because of the merger in the 1970 so before that time this game was seen as an NFL champion game so the NFL champions would face off against an all-star team from the rest of the league. And this is not to be confused with the collegiate all-star game, which was also going on. And that predates the Pro Bowl. In fact, that goes back to 1934 into the 70s. And then that was discontinued. So that was where they take on this sort of all-star college senior players. So uh, when does this game and, and what's it evolve? And when does it kick off and, and all the rest? So the winners of the Pro Bowl, so the two teams face off. And the winners of the Pro Bowl get 61 grand for winning it. And the losers get 30 grand. Um, now you look at some of these contracts these players are getting the likes of Antonio Brown uh, Tom Brady himself of course and all the big name quarterbacks why would they care to play um, they care to play because number one the Pro Bowl is seen as the Oscars effectively you've been voted in by three sort of factions right one is the coaches two is your fellow players and the third one which is kind of new as well is the fact that the fans get to vote you in so each of those votes hold one third um, and so you're kind of voted by your peers in. It's like the NFL Top 100 list that we see come out at the end of every season. So it's a big honor to be voted to the Pro Bowl. The wages that they get are peanuts, fair enough. But when you look at a rookie contract, I mean, some of these players are only on maybe 400 grand. So they could get like, you know, over 10% of their wages just for winning this game. So you will see a noted difference in the level of play from an experienced player versus a rookie. It's very important to them. But anyway, game started way back when. The New York Giants were the first people to play in this game. They played against the NFL All-Stars back in 1938. They took a break for the war. Don't mention the war from 1942 to 50. The game resumed in 51 and they've been playing it ever since. Um, now let's take a look at what we're going to see in the actual game itself and some of the little rule changes and where it's slightly different than a normal NFL game. Right, rule changes. And if you're going to be watching this game, What's different about it? So if, if anyone was new to the NFL watching the game, they wouldn't get sort of, you know, what rules are in the NFL is not what's in the Pro Bowl. So there's no blitzing. You can't blitz the quarterback. Um, you have to play in a 4-3 defensive scheme. That's getting a bit more technical about it. Um, clock management. So the ref blows the whistle, the time starts running. So if you have an incomplete pass, usually that stops the clock. Whereas in the Pro Bowl, they kind of want to get the game moving. And, you know, because it's not really hyper competitive. Uh, tackling is restricted you know there's the whole plethora of tackles that aren't allowed but let's just say it's restricted you won't see anybody hit each other hard in this game not unless they faced off in the regular season and there was a bit of bad blood there maybe that will happen uh, there's no kickoffs so you don't kick the ball to the other team and they run it back that's seen as a danger area for concussions in the regular season anyway they're trying to do away with it effectively so you're not going to see that happen in the pro bowl you just start at your 25 yard line uh, you can't rush the kicker um, so if he's kicking a field goal or he's kicking an extra point after uh, you can't rush him and lastly the game can't end in a tie and there's loads more rules but these are the main ones the game can't end in a tie it will go to overtime and they'll just keep playing until someone scores I think the normal overtime rules kick in where you know they have to score a touchdown in each possession after that whoever kicks the field goal ends up winning the game it's not going to be a problem in this game it's going to be very relaxed you get to see your all-stars play but look the Pro Bowl gets a bad rap. Let's look at the good things and then look, let's look at the bad things as to why people like it and why people really hate this game.
All right, what's good about it? Um, it's football. It's an extra game of football that we have in that sort of gap in between to let the Super Bowl contenders take that rest. Uh, the season goes from September to January to, well, the start of Feb. And that leaves a long, long time that we don't get a football game. So for some people, and I know after the excitement of the regular season, don't really want to be seeing the Pro Bowl. But as we're starved of football throughout the summer, you'll find comments on Twitter like, Jesus, I would even watch the Pro Bowl at this stage. I just want football. And preseason is a is a junkety game that no one really looks towards. And, you know, people want to see that too. Look, this game, you get to see the all-star players all mishmash together and uh, play that game together. You get to see, you know, Ravens and Steelers players play on the same team when really they're staunch rivals. In fact, to um, Mike Tomlin, uh, the Steelers coach, he's going to be coaching some Ravens players and they have some bad blood between them. Sean Payton is going to be coaching some teams and he was doing the choke signs and all the rest. So that's going to be interesting to see that fire. It lets players from different teams experience different coaches and different offensive plays, albeit the stuff is going to be, you know, baby stuff. So practice went on Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, and the game gets played on Sunday. And th another fun thing about it, and probably the funnest thing about this whole thing, is that they have a skills challenge uh, game where they will have the wide receivers catching balls. They have one where the ball gets lifted up by a drone and dropped, so you get to see all of the highlight reel players who are catching plays throughout the regular season catch a ball from a drone and um, then you'll see the quarterbacks in a skills challenge where they have to throw balls through targets that's kind of fun um, and then you'll see a game of dodgeball between the two sides so that's that's gas um, so that's on on Thursday night probably Friday morning again anybody in Europe is going to get to see it so why does it get a bad rap and why do people not like it well it's a junket game. Uh, the players get played, as I said, 30 grand for losing, 61 grand for winning. It's kind of seen as like a testimonial game. Nobody's going in hitting hard. There's, it's not competitive. That can arguably be seen as sometimes a, maybe that's a good thing. You know, you get to see your favorite players. They're not in that hyper competitive mode. They're, they're joking around, having a bit of fun. Um, arguably in this game, you don't get the best players because you will have, for instance, uh, Terrell Suggs came out a couple of years ago and voted for Ryan Fitzpatrick because he didn't want to vote for Tom Brady just to stick it to Tom Brady. Um, and also the teams that are playing in the Super Bowl don't play in the Pro Bowl so you could argue that the best players in the NFL are not playing in the Pro Bowl then but that's taking it a bit too seriously I think um, let's take a look now at some of the players that you will see in the Pro Bowl and why it might be worth a bit of a view Alright, so I'm not going to name off every name, but I'm just going to pepper you with some names to sort of show that these really are all-star names. We've Todd Gurley running back for the Rams. He was dynamite again this year. Uh, Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara uh, for the Saints. They were the best uh, tandem in the league. Uh, quarterbacks, everyone's going to want to see. Uh, Carson Wentz was voted in, but he has that injury. So Jared Goff has come in as his alternate. Russell Wilson is in there. Drew Brees is in there. Wide receivers, AJ Green from Cincinnati, Keenan Allen's in there, DeAndre Hopkins, Antonio Brown, uh, Le'Veon Bell, we're going to get to see him. Uh, Tom Brady was voted in, but they're going to have to get an alternate in instead because he's definitely not going to play. Uh, that would be the shock of the season. Ben Roethlisberger is playing, Philip Rivers. Um, so, look, massive names, but the big talking points really uh, every year is who's got snubbed. So we saw Leonard Fournette, who dragged the Jaguars into the playoffs and far into the playoffs, and they almost won that game. He didn't get a spot in the Pro Bowl. Uh, definitely should have deserved it. One, an outstanding rookie. He set some rookie records and NFL records, or at least tied them in the postseason with four touchdowns. So it's a bit of a surprise that he didn't get in. And then Harrison Smith, uh, dare I say it, from the Minnesota Vikings, which is a bit weird because a uh, Packers fan, but he is. He's the best safety in the league. He's been the best safety or one of the best safeties nearly every year that he's been in the NFL. So why he didn't get a vote to the Pro Bowl is an absolute mystery. And that goes to one of the bad points of the Pro Bowl and why people don't like it. Fans get to vote. If you're from a small town team like Green Bay, like Minnesota, when you compare that to the likes of Dallas, you'll find that, you know, some Dallas players will get in based on fan votes, uh, where some of the smaller players won't get in because they don't come from a bigger market. But look, that's the Pro Bowl in a nutshell. Be sure to tune in on the Skills Challenge. That's a load of fun. And watch the game anyway and, and see what it's all about. That will be airing on Sunday. I will be back with the good, the bad, the ugly piece. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a preview of a preview, leaning into the Super Bowl, looking at some of the talking points. And I'll be back with the vlog then, all about the Super Bowl and leading up and who I think is going to eventually be Super Bowl champs. And that's going to come out on Thursday. So until then, see you.